a very good thing to do. Myself, Dr. Niyati Thakur, take opportunity to welcome resource persons and delegates on behalf of SSR College of Pharmacy to second day of AICT Training and Learning Academy, sponsored five days EFTP entitled OECD Principles of Good Laboratory Practices. To brief about today's schedule, we have three eminent experts with us, Dr. Yogesh Murkunde, Mr. Parsi Italia, and Dr. Satish Patel, who will accompany us to understand and learn other aspects of good laboratory practices. The first session will be conducted by Dr. Yogesh Murkunde, and I take privilege to welcome you, sir. Sir will enlighten us about facilities with respect to good laboratory practices. To introduce him, Dr. Yogesh Murkunde is veterinary graduate with PhD in toxicology pathology. He is also certified diplomat of Indian Board of Toxicology Pathologist. He is extensively trained under great hands of professional leaders in toxicology pathology and toxicology as well as good laboratory practices from all over the group. Few noteworthy trainings include Europath 2006 and 2007 at Non-Veterinary School France followed by on-site training in 2007 at Eye Research Center of Huntington, UK and at Institute of Environmental Health Science, USA in 2011 and 2013. Dr. Yogesh has started his toxicology career in 2003 at International Institute of Biotechnology and Toxicology, a premier international GLP certified CRO and worked as pathologist and toxicologist. Later, he was entrusted as head of pathology and animal house at CRO till 2015. He was instrumental to establish state of art toxicologic pathology laboratory at institute. Since 2015, he is heading the center for toxicology and development research as test facility management and independent unit of Sri Ramchandra Institute of Higher Education and Research, Chennai. His expertise include gross and histopathology evaluation of laboratory animals, including zebra fish, chronic and reproduction toxicity studies, risk assessment and biological safety assessment for medical devices, providing training and consulting services for toxicology, pathology and laboratory animal management. Currently, he is involved in toxicity data generation of few Siddha, Ayurvedic and Yunani medicines used for COVID management, vitiligo, psoriasis, hypertension management, drugs in radio protection therapy, large molecules in diabetes management and herbo nanoceuticals. I now request Dr. Yogesh to enlighten us with his deep thoughts. Over to you, sir. Kind of adjustment. Yeah. So, Good morning, all. Um, first of all, I'm very thankful uh, to uh, SSR Institution for uh, uh, inviting me to discuss my brief experience uh, about uh, GLP. Uh, the topic we have taken today is uh, probably a very small topic, uh, um, one among the many principles, uh, facilities, right? Uh, shall I start? Sir? Yes, you yes, can sir. start, yes, sir. Yeah, yes. okay, great. Yeah. So, thank you for kind introduction. Uh, okay. So, uh, you can see that uh, we have this 10 uh, GLP uh, principle defined by OECD uh, guidelines, OECD principle of GLP. In that, we are going to talk today about uh, facilities. Uh, what it talks uh, in general is uh, general uh, uh, about little facilities, what how the facilities should be. 
and then uh, OECD describes about test system facilities. Then facilities for handling test and reference items, archives and waste disposal. It's quite a uh, basically very simple, small uh, you know discussion done by OECD principal here. Uh, what we are going to do is uh, probably uh, discuss a little detail uh, based on, let's say, my uh, brief experience and what are the facilities I have seen. We'll try to read between the lines. Uh, otherwise, uh, I don't think that probably facilities uh, as per OECD uh, document will have one hour discussion. So I will try to elaborate it. Uh, it will, uh, the, all words you should not be taking as it is from the what OECD uh, principal document says, document one. But these are all based on my general experience. So, GLP regulations as such uh, do not stipulate exactly how building should be constructed. It is up to management, it is up to facility to study uh, uh, you know, what type of studies you are going to do to satisfy authorities that the buildings are of adequate size and design that they function properly. Right? The, the exact type of uh, structure depends on kind of work to be performed in the building. So you can see the whether there uh, it is you know, uh, suitable or adequate for the study. And the important issue uh, is to be able to prove that the studies are free from any interference, disturbance, pollution, and any cross contamination. So there should be you know. So as we say, the test facility should be of suitable size. The construction and location shall meet the requirements of a study and shall minimize the disturbance that, allow, that would interfere with the validity of study. The design of test facility should provide adequate degree of separation for the different activities to assure the proper conduct of each study. Right? The way to protect the studies from contamination disturbance or interference is to ensure basically separation between studies, test systems, operations of uh, facility and test items. These four you need if you try to consider keeping separate probably you will be able to avoid unnecessary interference uh, for the uh, studies. Now as we saw OECD GLP principal document one emphasize and details about only test system facilities, test item control office, which will be, uh, you know, which is the facility for handling test and reference items, and RQ facility, and waste disposal. When it comes to RQ facility, we are going to discuss about dry and wet. However, uh, you need to, you know, uh, take one point in consideration that when uh, these are the OECD document one, but when you see the uh, FDA GLP, that will add up equipment in this section. In, in terms of facility, it talks, uh, uh, FDA GLP says buildings and equipments. Whereas we have this uh, four uh, items uh, emphasized in OECD GLP. So when we say about building, now when we say facility, let us start from the building, uh, in general, the complete um, uh, site. So this site we can distribute, uh, let us say, experimental area operational area and staff. Staff, though uh, probably you would have heard enough about uh, personal yesterday. The staff, uh, the what facility should take care of staff also is, uh, you know, need to be considered when you uh, start talking about buildings or the facility in terms. So when we say experimental area, we say we will connect test system there. In test system, though, the guideline discuss about only animal facilities. Most of the documents discuss about animal facility. I would try to, you know, include even cell culture facility. Because you know that test system does not only include lab animals, but we do have cell cultures. As well as we have another area called ecotoxicology, where you use aquatic species, avian species, or terrestrial species like earthworm, honeybee, 
are been studied. Sir. These are the test uh, systems in ecotoxicology. So uh, I, I hope like you can understand that when you say test systems requirement for building, you need to consider all these factors. Then you will have to con uh, consider uh, what type of studies you are going to conduct. For example, you are going to conduct, let's say, single dose studies only, or you are going to conduct repeat dose studies. You may conduct uh, uh, development and reproduction toxicology studies where uh, reproduction uh, purpose probably facility, you may have to have you know, basic simple alteration or understanding for that one. Or you may do uh, lo a lot amount of dietary studies where you need to mix. Okay. Okay. So, Participants, kindly unmute yourself. Oh, sorry, it was, oh, sorry, it was uh, uh, my colleague. It was my colleague from whose phone I was talking. So I think she is going out now. You are able to hear me from here now. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, great. Now my system is connected. It oh. took this much time. Okay. 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 No issues. Yeah, yes. You can continue. So uh, uh, you may have, you know, uh, dietary studies conducting uh, where you need to mix uh, diet and test items together. So you will get separate facility for that one, very uh, clear facility. Or you may, you know, add your test item in uh, water, uh, drinking water. So accordingly, you need to have, let us say, uh, your facility. You may have inhalation type of studies. So unless you have a clear cut, a good inhalation unit, probably, you know, uh, you will not be able to do that one. So while having a building, you need to consider these points. Then about operationals, uh, you need to you need to consider that um, uh, laboratory investigation. Sorry. Laboratory investigation. For example, pathology laboratory is there. So you will have to have separate area for necropsy, separate area for histopathology, clinical pathology, and all other stuffs. Uh, the most important thing uh, when it comes to operational, you need to ensure that the access to the building uh, should be very restricted, extremely restricted. Security should be uh, maintained. Then uh, the facility uh, must be for the cleaning purpose. There should be uh, adequate space for the feed, bedding, and utilities for example cages and racks isn't it excuse me hello yeah yeah who is this come me after one hour please yeah please thank you sorry for the disturbance so uh Access, um, we discussed about, uh, let's say, storage area. Regarding access, uh, I just um, uh, want to mention that uh, though we say we have restricted ac access, but you may see that, let us say, your facility is, uh, you know, one unit in the parent company. There are a lot of big bosses are there. Uh, service, guys, are there only three in your facility? Probably you cannot, you know, accept that one. You will have to have a system for that one. How? Uh, you know, every other person who is supposed to go inside, how they will access this uh, building. Then you need to have utilities and as we say, service people, uh, maintenance purpose, you should have separate area for that. Waste disposal and obviously you should have a space for uh, specimen data storage. This is the operational areas basically. In operational areas, um, uh, even, uh, you know, your um, uh, washing areas, cages, labwares, you need to have a special uh, separate uh, spaces for that one now coming to the staff you need to uh, you know ensure at any case that uh, there should be enough safety and comfort to the staff also many times certain small small things are ignored now what we are discussing please try, uh, try to make a note that these points are not discussed in detail in our oecd guidelines okay these are the line betweens we are talking the stuff between the lines okay so uh, you also need to understand when uh, uh, staff is there, what will the possible impact on the study from staff or on the staff? Impact of the study on the staff. You are uh, you know handling very hazardous chemical, so you need to ensure either way what will the impact. And I hope 
you know uh, once we say that in normal good uh, laboratory we should not drink eat that uh, you know standard practices we tell uh, everyone in uh, academic labs also uh, now you have almost minimum 30 to 40 people to maybe uh, 100 people if you can stop working there only you need to uh, give them some food or water something is required in that case where do, where do they go then so you should you should ensure that in your GLP facility you should have at least small cafeteria a sitting place toilets bathroom also need to be considered when you are start thinking about building in, in GLP scenario okay there should be separate IT and data entry areas also okay now you know this many things need to be considered when you are considering a building for the GLP facility however it is necessary that we should have for all these things studies must be separated from each other then this separation is also important to minimize disturbance by separation and that can be physical separations by means of let's say uh, you can uh, provide separate rooms for studies you can uh, um, uh, provide separate rooms from holding test systems or you can you know hold the test systems in ivcs or isolate isolators so that you can assure that these areas are separated by efficient uh, air systems which has uh, you know appropriate filters hepa filters and those things ahu systems now uh, physical is not always necessary there are other ways of preventing this interference between studies now few are uh, like you know we can discuss that you can define work areas uh, you can have a one way traffic system or uh, have different activities in the same area at different times you should ensure that the cleaning happens between activities so that you know the two activities interference or you know cross contamination can be uh, avoided or you can have a separate staff for separate activities so that by by having this organization of work you can do enough separation between the studies or works so now we'll see first component uh, the animal facility uh, the test, what oecd guidelines says in test system we'll uh, try to discuss about animal facility uh, what has been described largely by uh, oecd guideline or even other guidelines so what, what would be the you know general constituents of animal facility it's basically what we discussed building physical plant isn't it and then we have uh, what environment we need to maintain in animal facility what type of care we take of animals how, how the person uh, personals you know uh, go in animal facility or handle the stuff there and what are the equipment sops are minimum required there so in case of physical facilities uh, animal facilities you should have let's our corridor systems normally earlier days we called it clean corridor and dirty corridor now this dirty corridor word is uh, probably getting abolished and we call it now service corridor now this is probably for let us say uh, the simpler smaller facility the requirement for this one is uh, ever changing a lot of amendments are coming uh, you can have bms system uh, building maintenance system itself so you can have a separate floor from where service can access to the facility so this all maintenance people will not access your study rooms at all so that is the system is very to maintain clean rooms now this actual room goes also should be very importantly considered because they separate the common environment of corridor to the animal rooms uh, you need to give enough uh, consideration to the walls floors sleeves water lines drain pipes and all electric connection because a lot of you know uh, electric lines uh, electric equipments you are keeping there the electric connection also should be uh, considered here and uh, this should be accessible through service panel or shafts uh, in corridors outside the animal rooms as much as possible uh, if you avoid service people going in animal rooms that's the great thing yeah. next thing we need to ensure the cage or housing system now this cage or housing system should provide a secure environment that does not allow escape of accident or ex escape or accidental entrapment of animals or their appendages between opposing surfaces that's very important 
Now the sketches also should be free from sharp edges or projection that could cause injury to the animals. This happens. Your cage, you uh, know, uh, rabbit cages. Mostly they are stainless steel cages, isn't it? So if they have sharp edges, then there is a problem for the, uh, you know, they can inflict injury to the animals. Now, type of cages also should be very appropriate for the individual species. You cannot use rat cages for rabbit or rabbit cages for rat. So they should be appropriate for the, the species you are going to host. Again, the recommended spaces, the, uh, uh, the space allocation, it should be as per the CPCA guidelines. As it is, uh, for this animal, it must be designed to separate, you know, various activities as we discussed earlier, so that there is very low level of incidence uh, having interference between studies. Now, the systems can be uh, with some barriers also, which are like often promoted nowadays to ensure the minimal design. The, uh, the uh, designs also should take care of risk of the system. Uh, being affected by variables like temperature, uh, humidity, and uh, lights. It also uh, reduce the risk um, of the system incurring, encountering any disease uh, coming from outside or you know within the facility. And also, it should uh, the design should also help that the unintended test of uh, test substances. And wherever possible, the players can separate the uh, activities. Now, this barrier system is a kind of, let's say, state of the art design. This is very costly and it is not uh, always necessary. This building, uh, why that is not necessary? Because we have initially, one slide we have seen that you can even separate this activity by means of organizational uh, method. Right? This is a a kind of you can see that when animal room is there, this many are like uh, air, temperature, the food should not get contaminated, whatever the food you are keeping there, water should be clean. All those things are involved when you uh, think of animal facility. So, uh, other than this, when you consider animal facility, you should ensure that sufficient space not only for animal and studies but it should also allow operators to work efficiently you 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 are able to uh, very you know uh, efficiently the rack of uh, one you know uh, rack where you have kept some 20 cages they are very happy their space allocation is done but the person who is going to dose the animal or the you know way or formulate the uh, drugs there or he has to record the audit and there is no enough space in your uh, animal room then probably it is not going to uh, uh, help you Rather, it is going to increase the risk. Now, as we mentioned, that uh, uh, to minimize the effect of these environmental variables on the animals, the facility also should design and operate to control and or measure. Because in GLB, you will have to submit data. So, you need to control and also measure these environmental factors like temperature, humidity, airflow, the light, which is, you know, you need to give 12 hour to, uh, light and 12 hour dark. The uh, should be you know, sufficient. Otherwise, we know that uh, uh, eyes of uh, rats are very sensitive for the light intensity and the noise level. The environmental control system should maintain constantly. In fact, it is not that, you know, some during study, you maintain that and left it. And they should be also maintained level for the every species for rat it is different requirement for rabbit it is different requirement so you should be able to maintain that in case uh, you have a different system being maintained now the this construction of laboratory also should be built uh, with consideration of materials allow easy and thorough cleaning and do not allow that any test items or dirt to accumulate in corner cracks and you know um, cause the cross contamination with other stuffs. There should be uh, smooth flat surfaces. Uh, should be flat surfaces. There should not be scratches. Uh, no gaps or ledges 
where this dirt and dust can accumulate between walls, doors, or even ceilings. That is very important. And water should not accumulate. One minute, one minute. Uh -huh, yes, yes. Yeah, is it visible? Yes, sir, it is visible. Okay. Yes, okay. sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. okay. So, uh, now uh, we are saying about this uh, surfaces, walls, doors, ceiling. They should not have any gaps or ledges where dirt and dust can accumulate. Further, this uh, water, uh, when you have, you know, kind of uh, surface, uh, the water should not be separated. The floor should not be uneven, so that you uh, know that will cause any uh, uh, accumulation of water and uh, uh, any cross contamination because of the you know, bacterial development or something like that. There should be a. They are meeting one thing, sir. I know region a There should be a proper ventilation system with filter that serve to protect uh, personal and prevent cross contamination. Now there should be enough separation for species. Well, you have um, uh, different species maintain your facility. Rats, mice, rabbit. You may have large animal like dogs and uh, non-human primates. So species wise, you should you must have a separation because uh, the person who is moving from let us say. Uh, from mice room to rat room, probably that will not be allowed. At least from mice room to rabbit room, certainly not allowed. Right? Then uh, you have uh, different studies you are conducting. Inhalation studies are there. Dermal studies are there. Repression studies are there. So ensure that you have enough separation between the studies also. At least room wise, you, you should have a separate quarantine areas. The separate quarantine areas. When you say this quarantine area, its uh, air supply also should be a uh, very separate uh, compared to your experimental supply or a holding animal supply. There should be uh, proper change rooms for the personals to use before going in an animal facility. Uh, now, when you are in experimental area, you have a dose formulation area also. Dose formulation area, you need to you know, avoid that you make the dose formulation in your test rooms or experimental rooms uh, because you know there is a possibility that is a you know spillage or you know exposure to the Unintended animals or something. So those for separate those formation area must be there. Now uh, we have briefly uh, discussed that there should be you know st uh, storage area separately for uh, bedding. There should be uh, the uh, diet uh, that is like feed materials should be uh, kept very separately and securely. Uh, the dose uh, mixing that is the formulation area should be uh, separate in the within the facility and the uh, the cages and uh, the grills and what materials you are storing articulate material there should be a uh, proper storage area now this uh, cages and grill what i'm talking here now within the experimental area you may have a different store for maintaining your uh, unused cages and uh, you no know, racks and all those things but when you articulate them bring them for study purpose you need to uh, and them in uh, within the experimental area um, very carefully sterile material, we call it then you have as we discussed necropsy clinical pathology genetic pathology these areas are again uh, have a, a lot of chances of cross contamination they may uh, not spread infection uh, there is a lot of biological material has been handled fumes are there chemicals are there so you need to have a very separate dedicated area for this one 
and you also should have a proper waste disposal area now as we uh, mentioned there one slide we discussed in detail that you don't need to have a state of art facility uh, to maintain a uh, you know, glp state of art facilities yes it is good if you have it's a wonderful but there are number of procedures what we discussed earlier also that can be implemented to you know keep contamination other interference at minimum or you know you, even if barrier system is not available you can you know maintain that at at certain minimal level so what is that one for example uh, you can uh, ensure that clean and dirty materials are moved around facility at different times of the day and ensure that between that time the corridors are cleaned so that helps you to have you know clean area you may uh, minimize the entry of staffs into building not allowing unnecessary people to coming inside at least in animal rooms you don't allow uh, the people who do not have any works with the animals you restrict them you minimize them then in generally you can you know organize the workflow as we discussed uh, the clean and dirty materials can be allowed then you again can also do a very simple and you know um, uh, mid thing you can you can ask different clothing or you know gowns and apron for different zones within animal facility why because just now we said that the person working with mice uh, i have worked now with mice and i have again rabbit probably uh, as a test facility management or system i would not allow that one no, but the person is already inside so just for small work do you mean that the person should come out and you know follow complete procedure and go in the site that is the best way in fact but then i you know a small facility a lot of works are there what i would try to do is i will see that within the facility itself the person can change the clothing and before going to rabbit rooms he has a different clothing so you are able to reduce you are able to minimize the interference between these two areas now uh, we we said about dose mixing area or dose formulation area now this dose formulation area should be big enough so that it accommodates the number of staff working there sometime two three people are working on uh, some two three studies within your experimental area in that case at a time if morning uh, these two people goes inside or three people goes inside and they are preparing the dose and the space is very small either they have to wait one by one they have to go or there will be lot of truncated space and there is chance that you know mix up or you know spillage or accidents so that uh, you know this factor you should ensure that there should be space which can accommodate uh, at least a few number of staff working there and allow them to carry on their own works without risk of interfering in each other's work or mixing up their materials otherwise you know it happens that you uh, one guy is working with uh, 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 one guy is working with uh, chlorophyll pass and uh, wrongly these two drugs have been gone in different rooms it can happen sometime you know uh, both test item looks same and all those things and another thing is you know each operator should have a different workstation there should be enough space that you know you can uh, have a different workstation and you uh, uh, do your operations very efficiently uh, there should be sufficient uh, physical separation between the workstation so so that it will reduce the chance of mix up and uh, materials or it can avoid cross contamination because it is very sensitive zone and uh, it should be you know uh, uh, the access to it should be very limited uh, so that it will limit the possibility of people becoming uh, you know vectors of uh, uh, pollution or contamination between the studies or test item also it's it's uh, important in terms of uh, personal also in terms of the uh, people who are going to prepare the dose formulation coming to the environmental factors uh, uh, the uh, temperature we know it's uh, uh, very important uh, which affects you know uh, living organism uh, very seriously so we need to have constant room temperature and uh, variation uh, uh, of this temperature also we know that it can cause uh, changes in food and water intake your uh, data will uh, you know badly affect uh, study data so you should ensure that you know the temperature change should not go uh, you know uh, deviation should not happen uh, beyond 4 degrees celsius otherwise it will have a very uh, serious uh, alteration in biological responses relativity 
should be you know the ideally you can keep it 50 to 60 uh, I will, uh, allowed range is 30 to 70 we know that high relative humidity can cause you know a build up of ammonia which can cause a lot of respiratory disorders in animals and uh, you know even the airborne microorganisms can increase at the uh, lowest level temperature we know that it is very important we discuss um, there should be units the control unit should be control temperature and humidity uh, that can be kept outside the room dirt can be inside so they can you know uh, take the readings but uh, the units should be outside so that uh, there should not be any uh, dust formation on, on all those things lightning uh, you need to ensure that there should be 12 hour dark and 12 hour light cycle uh, i think around uh, 300 uh, to 350 lux is uh, you know uh, recommended uh, for uh, rodents but still you need to ensure you need to your own standards and see that it has been uniform and uh, it is not causing any effect on the eyes ventilations you know uh, normally we say 10 to 15 fresh uh, air room changes per hours are required uh, you can you can you know 100 percent pressure would be always best uh, but you can also you know if you have good HEPA system you can give recirculated air also and you should you know measure this uh, air supply poison academy is a group in because they can uh harmful effect on the animal okay good morning parents due to some technical network that's a kali delay of meeting idea any password yeah so uh, the loud noises can you know cause uh, epileptic uh, seizures in a uh, lot of you know specific rodents and all those things and this intermittent noise also you may say that okay there's no consonant sometime only someone is shouting there but that also can cause you know uh, effect on breeding performance uh, you, you have seen everything your test rooms are good you have good formulation area everything but you don't have a good uh, you know um, yeah then what do you do i was you know there was uh, some time back i was uh, consulting some uh, facilities uh, early uh, five six seven years before uh, wonderful facility they have uh, designed uh, on second floor of the building ground floor they are mortuary um, but there was no space for uh, you know they couldn't update they did probably you know but uh, somehow they missed uh, thinking uh, this wash area and the uh, facility is already on second floor there is no space at all there is no water line for uh, enough that they can you know clean the uh, cages and grills and water bottles so this type of things can happen so you need to ensure that uh, you are giving sufficient space for the uh, sanitation cleaning uh, equipments and all those things Uh, you must ensure that you know you have uh, arrangements made for emergency uh, weekends or uh, day for uh, care and maintenance of the uh, facility and animals. Uh, now the disposal that's again a very important point which has also been mentioned in uh, um, OECD uh, principles uh, that there should be appropriate space for waste disposal. More than space, uh, it should be a kind of let us say mechanism what mechanism you follow uh, to dispose the waste generated in the facility because you know different type of waste has been uh, generated in uh, glp facility uh, let us say there are uh, blood uh, swabs are there bedding materials uh, used bedding materials um, uh, feed leftover feed is there and uh, the uh, hazardous material the test items what you are using you do not know uh, the, uh, the complete hazard uh, hazardous uh, nature of these materials. Uh, you are using a lot of different chemicals like formalin, xylene. So all these things, uh, you know, uh, disposal system, there should be very defined uh, disposal mechanism should be there. Uh, you can hire basically now uh, many pollution control board system do not allow you to uh, dispose a lot of biological material by yourself so that, um, you know, you need to hire uh, commercial agents so that they can regularly uh, uh, dispose your waste um, on behalf of you uh, for the uh, norms of uh, local regulations and this is one more important factor that uh, there should be proper pest control uh, measures uh, within the facility which do not allow 
um, you know you have very uh, you know wonderful uh, rodent commercial diet and outside rats are coming and you know enjoying the uh, delicious uh, feast uh, of a complete uh, wonderful diet they are eating and outside but and your animals are getting uh, contaminated with diseases or viruses and bacteria and parasites so you need to ensure that uh, no uh, other uh, pest insects or wild rodents are coming in facility so moving to the, uh, next uh, what is uh, defined in oecd also is the test atom uh, control office or what we say uh, the facility which will handle the test and control atoms now normally uh, this facility deals with uh, uh, test and both control atoms which have been used uh, for receipt for uh, receipt in the facility uh, there's st uh, proper storage dispensing to the study directors weighing mixing uh, many time i'm sorry mixing many time uh, uh, probably as long as you know um, uh, not many facilities are doing mixing uh, within the test atom control office that's been done in formulation area but there are few glp facilities where the um, uh, test atoms are stored and uh, mixed or formulated and given to the state directors so that's a dispatch so this this area takes care of all uh, you know uh, storage of different type of uh, materials so we need to uh, ensure that the test atom control office accommodate uh, all activities without uh, any mix up or cross contamination as we discussed in earlier uh, areas also there should be sufficient work area uh, to separate the storage and also there should be uh, you know appropriate system where waste can be disposed now certainly the construction for this area also should allow easy cleaning and air flow a filter setup should ensure that it is not only protecting test atoms but the personals who are handling the test atoms or control atoms so what type of uh, areas you look forward in uh, this office or this area Uh, you know different storage areas for uh, different storage conditions uh, let us say you have uh, hygroscopic material you have volatile material you have uh, the acids acidic materials or corrosive or flammables you may have uh, you know in your your facility handling uh, pharmaceutical product or non pharmaceutical product like agrochemical Uh, you may have you know uh, recently we are doing lot of uh, safety testing for genetic uh, products like bt cotton bt brinjals their safety has been tested for all this type of material uh, you will require a different type of uh, storage conditions if they are like uh, corrosive kind of chemicals or uh, they uh, the fumes are coming out of chemicals you can have uh, this type of uh, you know ducts fume ducts uh coming out of this uh, cabin uh, this cupboards and take uh, sucked out directly outside or acid cabins like this corrosive cabins different uh, colors are been uh, mentioned or as for the so uh, safety or osha uh, uh, regulations that can also be followed if it is agroscopic you can uh, obviously you know you can use the this type of chambers or you can even desiccators there uh, the materials could be uh, photosensitive so you can you can use uh, either uh, amber color bottles or even black color cabinets or something like that right? yes. then, we have the archive systems uh, we must understand that in archive this is the one area i want to mention that uh, i have two facilities i work at some you uh, know uh, along in glp facilities this one the one area which was you know in fact keep increasing in the facility otherwise you have ten <laughs> test group uh pathology has been everything is fixed you don't need to keep increasing the uh, probably the capacity of equipments maybe you just increase the capacity of people and you do in uh, two shifts or something like that however the amount of work you keep doing this is the one area will certainly uh, keep increasing okay because you keep <coughs> sorry you keep this all this material for Uh, next 10 years and uh, you keep adding it that so this is one area you will certainly need to consider when you are building glp facility so that there should be adequate space uh, we will allow the storage of all the plans raw data final reports 
the samples of test atoms have to be stored until they are been expired now. And the specimen, specimen takes a lot of storage again. For example, you need to store all tissue uh, from the carcasses. You need to store all slides. You need to store all paraffin blocks. You need to uh, uh, store um, um, all other uh, micronuclear slides. Everything you need to store, uh, store in the container. Certainly, the access must be limited to the authorized person. At any cost, no other person, unauthorized person, should be able to access uh, archive other than archivist or you know uh, test facility management. Anyone going there should be proper mechanism and the justification if there is a requirement of access. Uh, the archive and condition they must you know protect this all contents what we are storing there. Uh, from untimely deterioration. It's very important. Second thing, you must protect this all uh, materials kept there uh, from the disaster and calamities also. For example, fire, flood, earthquake, uh, extreme heat, or you know, sometimes we, we get a lot of vandalism. Your facilities, you know, in some area where strikes are happening and suddenly started, you know, uh, some ruku started. So you need to ensure that you know you protect your archive from all these uh, calamities and disasters. At the end, um, you know, you must ensure that there is proper documentation. One important is, uh, you know, your facility floor plan. Uh, there should be proper exit plans in case of disasters and, uh, you know, emergencies. Uh, SOPs, whatever the, you know, facilities we mentioned, the, all these mechanisms uh, should be described in SOPs. And obviously, uh, when it comes to facility, and if you start thinking of equipments also in the facility, Obviously, uh, the records of logbooks, uh, calibration and maintenance will be very important. This is one uh, kind of, you know, just eye opener uh, slides, how the facilities or how the your labs should not be. Right. So uh, you can see that, you know, uh, it's a, there is a label that it is clean, but you can see a lot of dust and uh, particles and most corroded area. This will not only uh, cause the contamination in your uh, study outcomes, but it is also dangerous for the person who are working there. Right? This type of things can certainly uh, call for any uh, you know, accidents or dangers. You see, see this door. It's, it's for you know fire exit, and this has been locked this way. So it is you know if someone is running this side for emergency purpose, probably it will take long time for them to open this door and don't know what has been kept behind that also. You certainly don't want uh, storage, storage boxes and all those things kept on your you know, work benches, all those things. Untidiness is certainly, certainly bad. You, you, we all know that one, but sometimes, you know, things happen. You, you can see in this door, you know, fire extinguisher kept and someone has kept their, you know, their uh, apron there. So if someone in emergency requires that one, probably they will not be able to, uh, you know, even look at that. Uh, let's summarize that you know we are we are discussing when we uh, discuss about test. Hello, Yogesh sir. Hello. Sir, hello. Yogesh sir. Hello. Ah, yes sir, now you are audible sir. Yeah, I'm connecting with my colleague actually. So. Yes, yes, yes yeah, sir. I think yes. I lost my voice from the system. Ha, no issues, no issues. Continue yeah. sir. So uh, we were at summary. Uh, did we hear summary? It, it, it is remained. It is remained, sir. It is remained. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, 
when you say animal facility um, uh, the, it is not only test uh, system uh, but whole animal facility right we have discussed this uh, in detail earlier so uh, but what we uh, this list is been we, we are discussed uh, this is not you know uh, the complete one uh, it is uh, you know it is not complete account of your qualitative aspect of the facility uh, the laboratory design uh, must address the quality of work environment also and uh, also the environment for the uh, proper functioning uh, by the personnel we also need to focus on its uh, uses uh the design uh, should uh, you know solve the problem of uh, people and strive to enhance the human factors in every facility now this is this is reinforced uh, through a design which can produce an environment that will enhance communication and it will also promote the productivity within and between the various department for example you have pathology you have toxicology you have qau so there should be proper a flow between these uh, various uh, systems uh, you can you know apply various functional elements which will drive your architectural and uh, engineering design uh, which will solve a lot of uh, issues of toxicology laboratory uh, uh, what what it could be let us say the scientific process um, you are, how you are conducting studies how the test items are flowing from uh, tyco or test item control office to the test rooms Uh, accordingly uh, your uh, passage areas or the dimensions all those thing can be considered certainly uh, you cannot have uh, a one based solution uh, which is applied for one laboratory that can be applied for another laboratory also it all depends on your uh, own requirement own understanding of what you are going to do or what is your need what type of studies you are going to conduct so flexibility is you know already allowed by uh, oecd guideline oecd guideline want you to stick with the principles they want you to follow the principle however within the principle uh, if you have scientific justification you you plan it uh, you know meticulously you are allowed so uh, when you when you design and configure your laboratory you, you can have a flexible approach based on your workflow so in in the last few years if you see there is a very uh, you know particular message is been very clear uh, that uh, all this you know uh, new laboratories must be designed with enough flexibility which will support adaptability and change reason behind that what would be you can you can see now in recent few years there is lot of advancement in gene toxicity studies now that advancement has forced all this laboratory to adopt new designs in order to decrease the risk of contamination and ensure the accuracy of technical data what, what i'm trying to say here let us say if you uh, the one who are already three basic tests but now every day you say lot of amount of studies uh, comet assay mla assay hprd assay and many assays are coming in further lot of your toxicity studies animal toxicity studies are been you know uh, converted in the in vitro toxicity studies so these toxicity studies are been done in gene tox area only cell culture area so that uh, now if you are your laboratory was so small which will accommodate only chromos elaborations one or two studies where you will do your all these other cell culture studies so this is one recent change in recent year if your laboratory is not having flexible uh, flexible approach probably you will not be able to achieve this uh, 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 changes. So, uh, just to briefly tell about our facility, uh, we conduct uh, now, now being an academic area. Why I'm uh, you know describing this uh, 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 center for toxicology also because I understand uh, SSR Pharmacy College at you know such a remote location. Uh, they are thinking for the glp uh, discussion glp training so i thought i must you know uh, tell you or you know let you know that a center for toxicology and developmental research this center is uh, probably the only center in uh, private uh, health uh, university uh, system uh, which is glp certified which is glp certified from almost 2014 and we do conduct all this uh, regulatory toxicology studies here uh, we also conduct a lot of pharmacology models 
and what we are uh, having lacuna i yesterday i was listening uh, professor vaitu gupta sir's uh, discussion that uh, atal program and aicd programs are uh, trying to ensure a lot of training to uh, professional student uh, through internship or uh, through the professional courses uh, we try to uh, you know uh, initiate this such type of uh, adventure or uh, let us say endeavor at uh, center for toxicology being we are gfp certified uh, to uh, um, give certain very specific very professional uh, course uh, that is applied and regulated toxicology which is meant for the industrial purpose so our director uh, dr tanika chalam he is very senior cardiologist um, almost you know uh, what is a octogenarian uh, still working and he has a you know wonderful vision he had wonderful vision to see that Uh, what academic knowledge we have developed at this center for toxicology for the GLP as well as for regulatory toxicology can be you know shared with uh, pharmacology graduates or veterinary graduates who are seeking a very wonderful career in uh, GLP perspective uh, in preclinical research. So a very focused program he wanted to develop, and we were you know lucky enough to initiate this program from 2019 last year. Uh, we ensure that this program is taught by uh, not by uh, only by academic academicians, but uh, who are the experts from the industry. Uh, how this program is running now? This one week five day program is running. Similarly, we are trying to ensure that uh, a lot of toxicologists or the GLP experts are going to come, and they will teach the students so that these students, these pharmacologists, uh, the ph pharmacology graduate who will complete this regular regulatory toxicology program, will not be. treated when they go for interview as a fresher but as a experienced skilled and qualified professional and start job on day one so i thought this is very uh, you know a good uh, platform where i can share this information being safety glp certified and uh, being we are uh, you know uh, trying to see that some change in this area where this knowledge is not um, shared with uh, pharmacology graduates uh that's from uh, that's it all from my side today uh you know we are uh, this is our small facility um, operating from almost 2009 and uh, now we are in third uh, we are moving to our third glp cycle uh, from this center thank you thank you all if you have any questions probably uh, we can uh, try to take it quickly there are so many questions so we are able to only uh, take up only four or five questions yes please परीक्षित हेलो परीक्षित यस सर हेलो देर इज अर यस आर यू देयर सर देर आर सम यस सर यस सर आई एम टेकिंग सम हां प्लीज परीक्षित टेक अप या ओके ओके सर Sir, one question is there uh, yes. from uh, Dr. Suvendu Kumar Sahu. How can the GLP compliance status of the test facility or test site be checked? Pardon, please. How can the GLP compliance status of a test facility or a test site be checked? Okay, uh, the compliance can be checked. Okay. both are not this is only working i think that is not working yeah so uh, the compliance of test facility uh, can be uh, ch uh, checked by multiple ways once when you are uh, you want to check it internally by yourself you have a quality assurance section which always uh, goes on various audits and inspection which will do audit of facility which will do audit of various processes and it will do audit of Uh, the critical phases of studies so this will ensure that uh, the uh, all the works all the all the operations are happening as per the sops and these sops are based on again oecd guideline now this are basically again uh, already your compliance in been uh, defined or allowed by virtue of once you are glp certified the glp inspectors are already 
uh, gone through your SOPs and operations whether they are being compliant or not. Once that has been allowed, once that has been compliant, it is your QAU and test facility management will see that uh, the operations are happening as per compliance. Okay, sir, uh, one more question from Dr. Javed Ahmed Khan. Is there yes, a difference in GLP compliance for European and Indian system? The difference in compliance? Yes. Okay. European and Indian system. Okay. Difference in compliance in between European and Indian system as such, uh, probably uh, as per my experience, uh, there is no such thing because uh, largely European facilities do follow OECD GLP compliance and that is what we are following in India. NGCMA is a part of OECD GLP. There could be a very minor uh, differences when you talk about FDA GLP. However, uh, as long as I have seen, uh, they are 99.9% .9 almost similar. There could be minor few, or, uh, few things, but principle always remains same. OECD uh, principle of GLP as well as the FDA uh, principle of GLP, they are in line, uh, you know, uh, almost similar. Uh, one uh, simple factor I, I remember when I was working as pathologist, uh, let us say there was minor change uh, for the definition yeah, of raw data message. in terms of FDA GLP and OECD GLP. But otherwise, principle of GLP is the same. Compliance maintained by European facilities uh, for OECD purpose and Indian facilities uh, for OECD principles are supposed to be same and I think they are same. Beyond okay, that, if sir. there is uh, some minor things, uh, probably I am not aware of it. Okay, sir, uh, because we are running after time, so I am not okay, taking much questions. But sir, if you have... uh, Parishit, I would like to have okay. sir, one question okay, sir. that what is sir, uh, your experience says that the minimum uh, area of like uh, this type of lab uh, that uh, can be created like what is the minimum construction area is there any guidance or uh, like uh, the yes sir there is actually a very good question this one and uh, the answer also would be very simple uh, this will depend on the my requirement uh, what type of studies i want to uh, know conduct uh, how many studies I want to conduct. So let us say I want to conduct only for academic purpose. Uh, you know, uh, I should have a GLP facility for training purposes and I will do a very limited amount of studies, only talk studies. Then I will have a uh, sm uh, small quarantine area, uh, two air test rooms, uh, very small uh, uh, washing facility. But I want to add now okay. uh, genetic toxicology. Uh, okay. I want to do repeat dose study, then uh, the uh, space for the pathology will increase accordingly so your okay. space requirement um, uh, i was consulting uh, some time back uh, for some uh, universities only so probably uh, three to five thousand square feet area uh, probably multi-floor if you go that okay. should sufficient for a, a small basic facility a five thousand would be ideal but you can do up to square feet will be the ideal in one one way like if you have above five thousand square feet area it can be considered as a uh, root, uh, uh, workable uh, area that is a yes, comfortable certainly. workable area certainly yeah. academic yeah. and yeah. small facility 5000 would be sufficient yeah. but then you thank you very much sir floor. let us say your uh, you know ground floor may have basic animal facility breeding area washing correct, area uh, first floor correct. you can have uh, your pathology labs and that way correct sir correct wonderful sir wonderful and I think uh, we must compliment the way you taken it's like uh, covered almost all the concepts related to the facility because this is a very big area actually because every investment if I am uh, planning and everything is on facilities only then after every other 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 matter starts <laughs> so it's a very crucial certainly, <laughs> so certainly, sir. thank you thank you being a part of uh, this uh, our event and uh, uh, thank you very much we ensured that you spared your uh, one day <laughs> with us. It, thank it, you. it was all pleasure of mine, sir. Actually, thank you. Thank you for giving opportunity. Thank you. To, you know, hey, we'll be in touch, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. You, sir. Thank so, you. we have, sir, another.